Well, there is a woman on a mission in West Sacramento, and she wants to make housing more affordable for herself and eventually other people too. So how, you might ask? Well, with tiny homes on wheels, and they've been proposed as one solution to the affordable housing crisis. And this woman has been asking the city of West Sacramento to change zoning laws for two years now so she can live legally on her own land. Becca Habegger and digital producer Ayanna Williams explain what she's fighting for. What you've seen described as a tiny home likely runs the gamut of shapes and sizes. Some are fairly basic, like these cabins Sacramento County plans on using as shelter for the unhoused community. Others are small-scale luxury, looking from the outside like a traditional home, just tiny. My tiny home was built back in 2017. I've lived in it for over five years now. 33-year-old Robin Davis lives in this 160-square-foot home made out of a recycled shipping container, an undeveloped residential property she owns in the city of West Sacramento. No other house on the property, just her tiny home on wheels. I had lived in what I call my big home, my 1,200 square foot home. Three bedroom, two bath is, is just was way too much and I was just filling it with more and more stuff. And I had watched HGTV, you know, one of those shows, tiny home shows, and I was like, yeah, I could do that. Small though it is, Davis says she has everything she needs here, except permission. I'm aware that I'm living illegally due to not meeting the current zoning and code standards but your standards are out of reach and unaffordable, not just for me, but the majority of the population. Here she is speaking to the West Sacramento City Council back in November. She's been appealing to the council for about two years now, ever since moving her tiny home to this property. I've been denied a temporary use permit, denied off-grid options, denied affordability, and threatened with notices to abate. While this entire state has a severe housing shortage, lack of shelters, and thousands on our streets living in whatever they can to survive. She's facing thousands of dollars in impact fees from the city, plus the cost of hooking up her home to city water, sewer, electricity. She currently uses a compost toilet and solar panels. If you buy a tiny home and the impact fees and all the fees and the site plans, if all that's more than your home, not a lot of people are gonna be motivated to do that. Not a lot of people can do that. So what exactly is the problem? I don't really fit into any category right now. The city has rules for mobile homes and RVs, but Robin's home doesn't fit those categories. The city has rules for accessory dwelling units or ADUs, which is a second home on a property with an existing primary residence. But Robin's tiny home is the only thing on her property. We designed her home to live in full time. James Roberts owns Tainer, the Sacramento based company that built Robin's shipping container home and is now moving away from tiny home production and into design and consulting for people looking to build tiny homes. The demand is absolutely there. I mean, unfortunately, extreme unfortunate of the fires and now we have flooding, people are displaced. And so there's the desperation that sets in. You know, unfortunately, we don't have tiny homes just sitting waiting for purchase, but it obviously it can be built faster. We are designing things as to be kits so that uh, materials can be ordered and shipped to site and then put together in a much faster time frame, obviously, than a traditional house. He's helping Robin work with the city to adapt her home as needed, trying to find a middle ground so she can live here legally. But that's the part we're trying to figure out now is how do we make this round peg square hole work? He's hopeful a brand new ordinance that just went into effect earlier this month in Santa Cruz County will help Robin's case in West Sacramento. It allows for the kinds of tiny homes on wheels that Robin has as a primary residence. And now he's hoping the city of West Sacramento will take a look at that and possibly implement it themselves. A handful of California cities and counties have policies that are generally tiny home friendly, but specifically Robin would like to see more local governments allow tiny homes on wheels as someone's primary residence. When she started talking about the small homes, I was very intrigued with her proposal. West Sacramento City Council Member Norma Alcala says she wants to see West Sac become more tiny home friendly for a variety of reasons. Homelessness is, is chronic here in California and you can't just put a band-aid on it, you know. I know we have programs within the city that are very good. They help assist homeless folks, but it doesn't take care of the problem and tiny homes would. She says she plans on advocating for city council to make tiny homes a priority this year. ABC 10 reached out to the city manager's office as well as the West Sacramento mayor. Both declined to comment for the story. And Becca is with us now. Becca, I know that tiny homes, you know, the cost can vary, but how much money are we talking compared to a traditional house? Sure. Well, you know, James Roberts, who owns that tiny home company you saw, Tainer, he said that, you know, living in a tiny home can easily cut 
housing costs in half, although it does depend on how much you want to spend on the interior yeah. of your tiny home. You can make it real fancy and spend a lot of money there. You can be a little bit more bare bones. But, you know, he does add tiny home living isn't for everyone. It can fulfill, however, a variety of needs, whether someone wants to cut costs, be more mobile, reduce their carbon footprint, or downsize their housing. Uh, you know, we should note that uh, Tainer is no longer accepting new orders for tiny homes. Uh, people might see this story and get excited, but they're moving into the design and consulting in the tiny home space. And we really know that tiny homes have really been looked at as a solution to help those who are on house, right? Yeah, I mean, Alex, all over the country, I've seen examples of cities, counties, and nonprofit organizations turn to tiny homes to shelter the unhoused. You know, even right here in Sacramento County, we want to show you uh, these are pallet sleep cabins. We've reported on them. They're considered more shelters than tiny homes. This is on Florin Road near the intersection with Power Inn Road. This site is designed to include some 100 pallet sleeping cabins housing a total of up to 125 people since some of the cabins are made to house partners. The county hopens, uh, hopes to open this site in late spring. And before we go, I do want to talk about our digital producer, Ayanna Williams. She found this story from really boots on the ground reporting. So talk a little bit about how you guys even found this. Yeah, you know, Ayanna's beat is West Sacramento. She watches every single city council meeting. She found this story by listening to the public comment section. She heard this woman come up meeting after meeting, talking about how she was having troubles living on her own land in her own tiny home. So Ayanna dug into it, and here we are with the story. All right, Becca, thank you so much.